When I say Google, you probably think of Sergey Brin, Larry Page, maybe even Sundar Pichai, the CEO who's been running the company for nearly a decade. But what if I told you there's someone else, an individual contributor, not a manager, not an executive, just one engineer who's arguably had more influence on Google's success than any of them. And yet you've probably never heard his name. I'm talking about Sanjay Gamawat, one of only two engineers at Google to ever reach prestigious level 11 senior fellow. He's tall, soft-spoken, wears small wireframe glasses, and for most of his 25-year career, he stayed quietly in the background, building the system that power billions of searches, YouTube videos, emails, and AI queries every single day. The other senior fellow is his best friend, his pair programming partner in crime, the so-called Chuck Norris of the internet, Jeffrey D. Together, Jeff and Sanjay built some of the most influential software of the last two decades, MapReduce, Bigtable, TensorFlow. And I'm not exaggerating, they're the only two authors of the original MapReduce paper. Without them, Google wouldn't have dominated and become the powerhouse it is today. But without that one critical weekend in March of 2000, Google might not have survived at all. And that's where this story begins. This isn't a story about systems. Rather, it's about a quiet friendship that built the foundations of the modern internet and saved Google in the process. Welcome back to Tech Unmasked, a series where I uncover the biggest trends in tech and expose what's really happening behind the scenes. I'm your host, Naman Kapoor, a senior software engineer at LinkedIn. Be sure to follow me on Instagram for more creative, story-driven content. And if you want me to continue making videos like this, hit like, comment, and subscribe. This is the friendship that saved Google. Chapter one, the day Google almost broke. It was March of 2000, just two years after Larry Page and Sergey Brin launched Google from their Stanford dorm room. There's Larry, CEO of Google. Wow. Say something like that. Hi. At the time, Google wasn't the sprawling tech empire we know today. It was a scrappy startup running on a few hundred computers stacked in hot, cramped data centers. And those computers weren't enterprise-grade servers. They were ordinary, off-the-shelf PCs. Jeff Dean and other Googlers love to tell this story. Instead of paying $800,000 for an IBM supercomputer, they bought a rack of 88 PCs from a site called racksaver.com for just $250,000. It had comparable compute power, way more storage, and it ran entirely on Linux, a free open source operating system. For every dollar Google spent, it got three times more computing power than its competitors. But there was a catch. These machines weren't built for scale. Drives failed, power supplies burnt out, even healthy machines rarely lasted more than two or three years. With hundreds of them online, a few were guaranteed to fail every single day. Larry and Sergey knew that, so they didn't avoid failure, they embraced it. They wrote software that could handle the chaos, reroute traffic, and keep everything running even when parts of the system were on fire. But on this particular Friday, the problem went deeper. Google's core indexing system, the part that crawled and organized the entire web, had quietly stopped updating. Users could still search, but the results were weeks out of date. The system was grinding to a halt. Queries slowed, engineers scrambled to figure out why. And the timing couldn't have been worse. Google was in the middle of negotiating a massive deal with Yahoo to power their entire search engine. But the pitch hinged on one thing, a fast, reliable, up-to-date index of the entire internet. And right now, Google couldn't deliver. In a makeshift war room, six of Google's best engineers huddled around their desks. Among them was Craig Silverstein, Google's employee number one. Craig had personally rewritten huge chunks of the system and knew the code better than anyone. But this time, nothing made sense. Everything was broken, Craig would later recall, and we didn't know why. In the corner of the room sat Sanjay Gamawai, quiet, focused, black hair already streaked with gray. He joined Google just a few months earlier, following his longtime collaborator and friend, Jeff Dean. The two had worked together for years, first at Digital Equipment Corporation, now at Google. They didn't need meetings, they didn't need handoffs. They would often sit at the same keyboard, one typing while the other thought, then switch. It was like their brains were wired together. Craig knew who he needed, so he paged Jeff. Jeff had also joined Google recently, coming from DEC's Western Research Lab, where he had already earned a reputation for solving complex problems fast. He walked in, pulled up a chair next to Sanjay, and the two of them got to work, like they always had. At first, they assumed it was a bug, some hidden logic error buried deep in the system. But after hours of reading the code, line by line, everything checked out. Nothing looked wrong, yet the index wouldn't update. The system kept stalling, and the entire team was running out of ideas. By the fifth day, Jeff and Sanjay decided to go deeper. Sanjay took the corrupted index file, the one the system couldn't process, and dumped it to raw binary. No formatting, no structure, just a string of ones and zeros. The same ones and zeros being stored in memory. And then they saw it. A bit that should have been a zero had flipped to a one, then another, and another. This wasn't a software bug, it was a hardware problem. Those cheap memory chips from Racksaver were randomly flipping bits. And before the corruption happened, before the software ever saw it, there were no errors. No warnings, just silence. The indexer was quietly reading garbage and then choking on it. It was a moment of clarity. Jeff and Sanjay realized that Google had hit a new level of scale, where even rare hardware failures were no longer rare. They were happening daily, 
and it was no longer enough to just write software that worked when everything was fine. They had to build software that worked when everything was failing. So they rewrote the entire system, not a patch, a full upgrade. Code that could detect corrupted data, flag it, route around it, and then heal the system automatically. By Sunday night, Google was back online, fully indexed, fresh results, and the Yahoo deal was saved. Users never realized how close Google came to collapse. They don't need us anymore. But inside that war room, something had changed. Jeff and Sanjay now realized that resilience wasn't a nice to have, it was a must. It was survival at all costs. And from that point on, Google would not be built on perfect hardware, but on smart software that could handle failure as the norm, not the exception. Over the next few months together, they laid the groundwork for systems that would define the modern internet. MapReduce, Bigtable, the Google file system, massive distributed systems born out of necessity and built on trust. And it all started that one fateful weekend. But to really understand how this all happened, why it worked and why it lasted for so many years, you have to understand them. Who were they? Where did they come from? And how did their partnership change everything? Chapter two, the partnership that built Google. Before they were two of the most legendary engineers in Silicon Valley, both Jeff Dean and Sanjay Gamawat were just kids who liked to solve hard problems. They didn't come from the same place. Jeff grew up in Hawaii. Sanjay was born in India. They met at DEC's Western Research Lab, a playground for elite engineers, a place where you didn't need permission to chase good ideas. You just had to prove that they worked. That's where Jeff and Sanjay first teamed up. And that's also when something clicked. They worked together like jazz musicians. One would code, the other would read, then they would switch. Back and forth, no ego, just flow. But after a few years, they wanted a new challenge. That's when Jeff heard about a small search engine startup out of Palo Alto, run by two Stanford PhDs, Larry and Sergey. He interviewed and ended up getting an offer. But Jeff didn't want to go alone. So he told them, if you want me, you also have to bring in Sanjay. They didn't hesitate. In 1999, Jeff and Sanjay both joined Google. And right away, they started working on the parts of the system no one else wanted to touch. Their partnership became one of Google's greatest assets. Because when the company hit technical walls, like the indexing crisis in chapter one, Jeff and Sanjay didn't just patch things up, they reimagined how things were supposed to work. They weren't loud, they didn't chase title, they just quietly became two of the most trusted problem solvers in the company. Jeff once said, when I work with Sanjay, the code we write together is better than anything either one of us would write alone. This kind of synergy is rare, but at Google, it became their secret sauce. Okay, quick break for all of my loyal followers. As I've been moving towards making content creation my full-time job, I've been brainstorming new ways to connect with all of you, and one of them is merch. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that I love wearing hats. So I figured, why don't I design one that I would actually wear, and if you like it, you could grab it too. To bring this idea to life, I'm using Recraft, an AI-powered image generation and editing tool built for designers and creators. Whether you're making merch, social posts, or high quality graphics, Recraft lets you generate images with precise control over size, structure, and texture way more than just abstract AI art. Their latest V3 model is setting benchmarks in the space. And if you're a developer, Recraft's model is also available via API, so you can easily integrate AI-powered image generation into your coding projects. If you wanna check it out, you can get started for free or use the link in the description with my special code, Kapoor12, for $12 off any paid plan. And hey, let me know what you think of the design and maybe we'll make it happen. Chapter three, how Google learned to scale. After the indexing crisis of 2000, Google had fixed the problem, but Jeff and Sanjay weren't just interested in fixing things. They wanted to solve them for good. Because here's what they realized. What broke that weekend wasn't just a bug. It wasn't just bad RAM, it was a signal. Google had reached a size where it was gonna fail all the time. And if they wanted to survive, they couldn't rely on perfect hardware. They needed perfectly resilient software. So they started building it, not in some giant top-down initiative, just the two of them hacking away, solving one problem at a time. Every team was reinventing the wheel. There were no shared tools or shared infrastructure. So Jeff and Sanjay saw an opportunity. What if we had a system that could split a big job into tiny tasks, spread those tasks across thousands of machines, and then automatically stitch the results back together? Something simple to use, but powerful enough to scale up to Google's needs. So they built it and called it MapReduce. MapReduce was a revolution. It turned Google's messy batch jobs into clean, scalable workflows. It abstracted away the chaos and made every engineer at the company 10 times more productive. Uh -huh. yep. But they weren't done, not even close. The next challenge was storage. Google was dealing with a tidal wave of information, web pages, images, click logs, emails, and their existing file system couldn't keep up. So Jeff, Sanjay, and a small team built GFS, the Google file system. GFS was built for failure. Files were split into chunks. Each chunk was replicated across multiple machines. And if one machine went down, the data wasn't lost. The system just rerouted and moved on. And to store all this structured data, URL, search terms, user behavior, they needed something beyond a traditional relational database. So they built Bigtable, 
Bigtable wasn't SQL, it wasn't relational, it was something brand new. A distributed, column-oriented database designed to store massive, sparse data sets across thousands of servers. It became the foundation for everything from Gmail to Google Search to Google Earth. And none of these systems were flashy. They weren't built to win research awards or impress at conferences. They were built because Google had no other choice. Chapter 4, The Quiet Architects of Google By the mid-2000s, Google was no longer a scrappy startup. It was scaling faster than almost any company in history, indexing billions of web pages, launching Gmail, Maps, Earth, YouTube, products that would define a generation of the internet. But behind the scenes, the reason all of it worked, the reason it could scale was because of systems like MapReduce, GFS, and Bigtable. And behind those systems were Jeff Dean and Sanjay Gamawan. They weren't execs, they didn't manage huge teams, but inside of Google, their names held weight. Engineers would literally say, what would Jeff do? They had a nickname for his code, Jeff Code. It meant clean, fast, elegant, bug free. He wrote so much infrastructure code that people joked Google should measure time in Deans. One Dean was the amount of code Jeff Dean could write in an hour. Spoiler, it was a lot. But Jeff would be the first to say it wasn't just him because every step of the way, Sanjay was there too. Sanjay was quieter, more behind the scenes, but inside Google, engineers knew. If Jeff moved fast, Sanjay moved deep. Where Jeff optimized systems end to end, Sanjay could zoom into the edge case, the boundary condition, the thing that would break six months from now and fix it before it happened. Together, they weren't just productive, they were trustworthy. The kind of engineers who didn't just hit deadlines, they hit the right solution. And they weren't territorial. They taught, they reviewed other people People's code. They shared what they learned. The systems they built didn't just work, they made other engineers better. That was the quiet superpower. They didn't just write great code, they created an environment where everyone could. And as Google grew from hundreds of engineers to thousands, that's what mattered. Because complexity doesn't scale well, but good systems and good people do. Chapter 5, The Friendship Behind Google. Jeff Dean and Sanjay Gamawa didn't just build Google's infrastructure. They built a life, together. Not in a loud, co-founder kind of way, not with press tours or book deals, just quietly. You see, Sanjay never married. He's deeply private, soft-spoken, but he's not alone. He bakes with Jeff's daughter, spends holidays and vacations with Jeff's family. On Fridays, he drops by their house to hang out. No agenda, just some quality time. In fact, in Silicon Valley, they live just a few miles apart. They've worked side by side for over two decades, from DEC to Google, from crawling the web to shaping the cloud. They still review each other's code. They still build together. And it's not just that they trust each other, it's that they trust each other with everything. When Google was scaling faster than anyone could predict, they leaned on each other. The friendship became the foundation for how Google's best engineering teams operate. No ego, no bureaucracy, just focus craft, and curiosity. Even as Google grew to tens of thousands of employees, the Jeff and Sanjay model then geared. Think deeply, move quietly, build with care. Their influence wasn't top-down, it was cultural. An engineering ethic built on trust, humility, and long-term thinking. But maybe the most impressive thing is that Jeff and Sanjay never chased the spotlight. It just somehow found them. They showed up every single day, side by side solving hard problems, building good systems, and living lives rooted in quiet friendship and deep trust. Because in the end, Google didn't scale because of venture funding or fancy marketing. It scaled because of two engineers who shared a keyboard, shared a mission, and shared a lifetime.